Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time with the goings on in the EV revolution. And today the show is all about car manufacturers. We've got a bunch of news from some different manufacturers. So let me get right into it. So my first story is about the Mercedes-Benz EQA. I've got more information regarding the smaller SUV, which will be arriving in Europe this spring. It will be maintaining the Mercedes-Benz styling cues from its bigger brother, the EQC, and sold as their entry-level vehicle into the all-electric marketplace. There will be two models available, a 250 Sport and a 250 AMG. Both versions have 263 miles of range on a full charge, now that's a WLTP number, a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, supports up to 100 kilowatt DC fast charging, and in-home charging up to 11 kilowatts. Now, no other details have been released, but initial UK, UK price, excuse me, is as follows. For the 250 Sport, it's estimated to be about 40,000 uh, pounds, and that's on the road, including the plug-in car grant, um, and about 43,000 uh, 43, more for the PICG. And the 250 AMG line is priced from about 42,000 pounds, with the extra stuff there. Now it's a lovely addition to their all-electric lineup and I hope that Mercedes-Benz does well with this model and brings it to the North American and other markets sooner rather than later. Switching gears to Toyota, it seems like Toyota has finally, finally jumped on the all-electric bandwagon with no time to spare. They announced plans for two battery electric vehicles and an additional plug-in hybrid model. By 2025, Toyota aims to have 40% of new U.S. vehicle sales to be electrified models. That's hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and EVs. And by 2030, it expects that increase, uh, the number increase to nearly 70%. Now, I hope that this percentage is more heavily favored to all electrics, but we will see. One of these newly announced uh, all-electric vehicles should be a SUV that Toyota already confirmed for Europe. This is to be part of a joint venture with Subaru, which will also result in a Subaru electric crossover set to arrive later this year. Toyota also confirmed that it's developing a dedicated EV platform called the ETNGA that will offer a lot of flexibility for multiple drive configurations. Now, why has Toyota been so reluctant to move into the electric arena? Well, according to them, their research has shown that battery electric models and plug-in hybrid models offer similar environmental benefits. Um, Toyota claims by greenhouse gas emissions, a currently available uh, BEV model and a HAV model are about the same. Uh, so that's a hybrid electric vehicle model, not plug-in, when considering electricity production for the average U.S. energy grid. Now, come on, folks. We know that uh, runs counter to what the Union of Concerned Scientists has calculated, that there is almost nowhere in the U.S. and many other parts of the world in which the average EV doesn't produce fewer global warming emissions. Electric vehicles also have the advantage of becoming cleaner each year as the grid mix transitions to move more renewable energy. So I really hope that Toyota is serious about all electric uh, vehicles and gets off the hybrid train. Non-plug-in hybrids do very little to cut down GHG emissions, and they are more of a feel-good marketing gimmick now, in my opinion, compared to the battery technologies and charging infrastructure that we have today to support all electrics and larger size pack PHEVs. So we will just have to wait and see. Now, sticking with Toyota, they did announce that its Pro Ace City small van in Europe, which is produced by the PSA Group in Spain, will be offered in an all-electric version, mirroring the upcoming PSA's compact EV vans, which I'm going to talk about in a sec. It's not the first time, as Toyota already introduced an all-electric medium van, the Toyota Pro Ace Electric, and its passenger version, the Toyota Pro Ace Verso Electric, also through a deal with the PSA. Now, these types of deals to sell the same car under many brands are very common in the European commercial vehicle segment, and they're there to increase volume and to lower costs. 
the all-electric Toyota Pro Ace City Electric Van, and passenger Toyota Pro Ace City Verso Electric, it's a lot to say, should be ready for deliveries uh, for the first customers by this autumn. And the specs will be exactly the same as in the case of the PSA brands, about a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, 100 kilowatt of DC fa uh, motor, sorry, and two onboard charging options, a 7.4 uh, single phase and 11, point, uh, 11 kilowatt three phase. So now that I talked about Toyota, let me switch over to Stellantis. And I talked a lot about Stellantis. Um, of course, they're the merger of PSA and FCA. Now they have announced a series of all electric passenger and cargo vans, again, targeted at the European marketplace. Now this is all based on the company's ECMP platform. And these vans will be offered under various nameplates, including Citroen, uh, Opel, Vauxhall, and Peugeot. Now they all share similar specs, as I mentioned before in the Toyota, including a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, a 100 kilowatt electric motor, producing up to 260 newton meter, 192 pound feet of torque, 7.4 single phase, 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charging, and up to 100 kilowatt DC fast charging. So let me run down these vehicles, starting with Citroen. The Citroen E Berlingo van which will be offered in a cargo and passenger version, will have a range of up to 275 kilometers, 171 miles WLTP. The cargo versions will carry up to 800 kilogram payloads in 4.4 square meters of volume space. Opel and its British subsidiary Vauxhall will provide the Combo eLife passenger van. Again, with similar range specs of about 280 kilometers, 174 miles WLTP, and be available in a five-seater and seven-seater passenger versions. A cargo version of this will also be offered under the name of Combo E, which is a compact delivery van with similar specs to the E Berlingo cargo van. Finally, Peugeot will enter a third next-generation all-electric small van with the E Partner which joins the midsize E-Expert and the large size E-Boxer. The specs of the E-Partner are the same as in the case of the other PSA brands and the Toyota Pro Ace City Electric that I just mentioned. It will also be available in cargo and passenger offerings and all, all these vans have towing capacities of up to 750 kilograms. Now delivery for all these models will begin in the late summer, early fall of this year and with availability continuing to the UK in around the November timeframe. No official pricing has been released on any of these yet, but it is estimated that these all-electric van offerings should start around 30,000 euros before any incentives or grants. Now, if you recall, I talked about Stellantis's strategic plan on episode 119, which included their electrification roadmap for this decade. I'm very glad to see that they're not wasting any time by offering these all-electric vehicles via their many brands. And hot off the press, my final story for this episode is from General Motors. For Valentine's Day, they debuted the all-new Chevrolet Bolt EUV and the redesigned Bolt EV as 2022 models. The all-new Bolt EUV is a compact five-door crossover hatchback and is a size class larger than the Bolt EV, with more room for passengers and for cargo. The Bolt EUV is underpinned on the second generation of GM's battery electric vehicle architecture, otherwise known as the BEV2 platform, which is the, shared by the first generation Bolt EV. The EUV seems to have the same battery electric powertrain as the Bolt EV, with a 66 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack and a front mounted permanent magnet electric motor rated at 200 horsepower and 266 pound feet of torque. EPA driving range is stated at about 250 miles, 402 kilometers. Now, new technology is added to this model with the option of GM's Super Cruise autonomous driving aids and a rear camera mirror. These new Bolt EUVs will be manufactured in Michigan at the Lake Orion assembly plant with deliveries commencing later this year. 
The Bolt EUV will be available in two trim levels, LT and Premium, with pricing estimated to start at about $35,000 US before incentives. Firm pricing will be released later on this year. The redesigned Bolt EV for 2022 will only be available in one trim level, LT, and of course shares both the front and rear styling cues with the EUV. Some new technology is also added along with more comfortable seating, hooray, people are asking for that, and smoother handling. Now a refreshed interior dash for the, Bolt, the new Bolt EV, as well as a new sport-inspired steering wheel and one pedal driving button seem to highlight some of the changes inside. EPA driving range seems to be the same as the 2021 model year of 259 miles, 417 kilometers. Now, it's hinted that GM plans on selling the Bolt EUV vehicles into the North American, South Korea, Middle East, and some select South American markets. More information will follow as GM gets closer to meeting deliveries for these new vehicles, again, which should be later this year. So listen, folks, I love the look, and I think the Bolt EUV will sell very well. I think it's going to be a big hit for GM, as we all know that the compact SUV marketplace is hot, hot, hot. And with these new features, I think it's going to pull in many new buyers. So, congratulations, General Motors. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for sticking through it. Tried to get that through as, uh, all those stories through as quick as I could. A lot of stuff happening, as you can see. Appreciate everybody for watching on YouTube, for liking and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. For commenting always love to hear your comments thank you very much for that also humble thanks to my patreon supporters you know who you are thank you very much appreciate it uh, i'm going to continue with my own psas uh, by telling people to continue to stay safe please public follow public health guidelines excuse me and use your common sense we will get through this the light is at there is a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere it's there trust me folks we just got to get there might take a few steps longer and of course, keep watching the EV landscape. All kinds of stuff happening, right? I've been talking about all these manufacturers over the last episodes, and I'll, I'll continue on with some more throughout the year. Uh, lots of stuff happening. It's an exciting marketplace, so I hope that you're enjoying what you see here on the show and all the other coverage that's out there. And again, thank you very much for watching. Everybody stay safe. And until the next show, please take care, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.